So good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, tonight, I want to talk about some of the traits of of a disciplined trader. Some of the things that I have noticed, um, as a lot of you know, I do an, an awful lot of individual coaching, working with people from all over the place and all different kinds of goals and account setups and things like that and there are some specific things that um, I notice in traders that tend to pick up and do very well and those who struggle for a long period of time and so I want to cover those now let me first start off by saying um, I struggled for a long period of time um, <clears throat> I had I had true trouble in my trading for a long time. And the thing is it was it was all self-inflicted. <clears throat> and I'll talk about that as we go along. But some of the things that we have to do if we're going to improve as a trader. Is everyone in here, you know, listening right now, you want to improve, right? You want to be a better trader. You want to figure out how to um, make consistent profits. Now, when I say consistent profits, I didn't say a perfect trader. Okay. How to make consistent profits? We have to plan for losses because we know they're going to happen. There's no such thing as a perfect trader. There's no such thing as a perfect trade. One of the things we do as traders is we often... Um, are really really hard on ourselves even when we find success in in a in a single trade or a week or a month um, when we um, go through periods of time where there might be a few losses in a drawdown and then we toss about in that and I want to talk about all the different aspects that can help you get that under control and I will be talking a little bit more with that coach's mentality here tonight. So if I sound a little bit more direct than normal, that would be that would be the reason because I've just learned from a lot of folks along the way. Um, you know, working with all these different people, those hangups that that really cause us a lot of problems. You know we come to work every day and we're busy you know things are happening things are popping we're rushing around we're trying to keep up with the room we're trying trying to keep up with stocks popping off and news events and all these kind of things but one of the one of the things that um has always been important to me is the efficiency of what i do you know um it's a blast if you ever i mean it's a it's a lot of fun to watch a goofy dog running around in circles out in your front lawn chasing their tail but it's certainly not very productive is it and the thing is a lot of traders mistake activity for achievement that they are, and, and, and I hear this from folks I work with all the time, I am, um, I'm, they, they just tell me I'm so busy all day long, I'm just, and I don't understand, I'm not, I can't make any money. Um, and they're, they're constantly frustrated and in a rush all the time. It's, it's as if they can't, can never, ever catch up to themselves, okay? They're always rushing and chasing themselves, chasing their tail. And we have to remember that just because you're busy doesn't necessarily you're being efficient, doesn't necessarily uh, mean that you're accomplishing anything um, productive in your trading or in your business. And by the way, I'm, I'm gonna talk about trading as, as a business because Anyone here that's listening to me right now, I personally don't believe you can be successful in trading and just be casually doing it. And the reason I say that is because there are trained professionals and their entire job is to take your money. 
Okay, that's what they do. That's what the big inf investment firms do. For them to make money, somebody has to lose. Quite often, it's the retail traders that lose. They have all kinds of tactical advantages. Okay. We can have advantages as well if we maintain a focus and a discipline in our trading and um, make sure that we're working in an efficient manner in, in our trading. So it can be, how many in here um, over the years or, or maybe even now, at the end of the day, you're just mentally worn out, you're exhausted. You're just, you're just completely spent. Um, and then at the, and then you go back and try to figure out what you actually accomplished during the day. Find out not much happened. Yeah, have to take a nap. You're just, you're just so, so fried, so burnt out. And there's, um, and I'll tell you guys, that's really, really common. It's really common that we get so um, we get so busy with um, all these different things that may or may not be important and most often aren't important. Um, and we end up wasting an entire day. And here's the other thing. You waste a day and then you waste another and you waste another. And pretty soon it becomes habit, doesn't it? In fact, you don't even recognize that you've been sitting there all day long, have achieved nothing, you're tired, but your time has been uh, poorly spent. Okay. Well, um, Cam, that is one, um, one thing that certainly comes up is folks do... Um, they focus on a lot of things. And, and isn't it true with traders, we tend to be attracted to that new shiny object, right? That thing that, you know, it's kind of like that dog in the front yard when it sees a squirrel. You no longer have that dog's attention. Same thing is true with traders. Someone posts something in the trading room, squirrel, you know, and, and everything that you were thinking about just goes right out the door. Somebody posts a stock or you hear something on CNBC or a news report, boy, this stock is really shooting up. And that's all you can think about for a little bit. Your, your focus is completely drawn, drawn away from what you should be doing. <clears throat> okay. And, and, you know, Diva, it's okay to be a day trader if you decide that's what you're going to be. Okay, and we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. But what we want to do is we want to find a way that we can be productive, okay, that we can avoid those um, distractions that pull us away and we can have a focused plan and here's the other thing guys how many how many of you want to have more free time isn't that one of the reasons we became traders is we want the freedom and the lifestyle of trading but we've created so much busy work that suddenly we realize we have no freedom. We've been chained to a computer, chained to an office chair all day long. Nothing got done, nothing got accomplished. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about some of those things and how we can maybe improve that. This is one of my favorite quotes. Um, never mistake activity for achievement. And, you know, this this really served true in, in every aspect of my life. Everything that, everything that I've ever done, I've always tried 
to focus on the efficiency to get more done in less time. I, I often joke, you know, I work a lot of hours, but I often joke about I'm lazy and I'm not afraid to admit I'm lazy. If I can find some way to make things easier and take some work off of me, or if I can find an efficiency that improves my process and trading, I'm all for it. I don't have I don't have a half a second to change. If I can make something more efficient, I'm going to take the lazy path every time. Okay, so efficiency is really important in what we do. Now, how many of you guys would agree with this statement? The trading doesn't just reveal your character. It also builds your character if you stay in the game long enough. How many, how many out here would, would agree that every weakness that you have as a trader, every um, emotional hang-up that you have with money, every um, hang-up that you have in your charting, every hang-up that you have with indicators, with emotion the market has a tendency to shine a spotlight on that doesn't it and it's really i'll, I'll tell you there, there may be other businesses that do this but i'll tell you i have never ever personally experienced any kind of business that does this as efficiently as trading does In fact, it just slashes and burns through all of those problems, right? We get to experience really quickly when we have um, egos about our training. When we think we know it all in our training. I've had coaching customers that have had months month after month after month of success and then suddenly just kill their trading i mean just literally crush their trading because suddenly they know everything there is to know you can't tell me anything and i know what the market's going to do anybody ever done that i did almost broke an account doing that i got this stand back and watch me i'm special Guess what? I'm not special. I wish I was. I wish I could tell you that I have the ability to just determine what the market's going to do at the next moment in time. But if I did, guys, you'd never hear from me because I'd be living in a private island someplace and you wouldn't hear a word from me. Nobody has that special talent. So one thing here is give yourself a break. All right. We all have problems and issues and character flaws that create obstacles in trading. Okay. We have to work through those issues. And here's the hardest thing. We have to fess up to those issues. How many of you agree with that? Then unless you address those problems, if you don't fess up to these issues, these hang-ups, these little flaws that we all have, trading will always be that elusive thing out there. If you're not willing to look inward have that hard conversation with yourself and start dealing with these things, you're gonna struggle as a trader, okay? Now, <clears throat> one of the things that is true if you're tenacious enough and you got, you, you're stubborn enough, <laughs> <laughs> and you don't quit along the way, you learn an awful lot about you as a person. 
you learn an awful lot about what makes you tick, what creates these issues and problems in your trading. Okay, I'll give you an example. I was <clears throat> I was doing really well in in my trading. I had built my account. I was I was getting ready to go full time. Everything was looking good, and I was and I was so excited about going full time. You know, I was just jacked up, and I finally I finally made it. I arrived. Okay, look at me go. And I thought, you know what I'm going to do? Man, I'm going to set up my office. It's going to be really cool. I'm going to make sure and have my drinks, you know, nice and handy. And I'm going to have the financial news on. Boy, nothing is going to get past me. Well, guess what happened, guys? <laughs> I went from not being able to watch the market very much, trading successfully, with a very simple strategy and a simple plan the squirrel got me not only did it get me it almost bit my whole hind end off okay all of those things started and my my trading just went terrible and i thought oh my gosh here i am here I am finally making this move. I thought I had this stuff down. And I had to stop and I had to ask myself my qu a question, what changed? What changed? Well, because I was able to watch the market all the time, guess what I was? I was micromanaging. I was chasing around the news. Rushing here and there, trying to be the super trader. And it ended up costing me a ton of money and time. In fact, it was one of those things where my my wife was like, um, "Can you get that um, get that next construction job so that we can <laughs> can you make the, make this happen?" Right. Well, it was that willingness that I had to go back and evaluate and say what changed what caused me this problem and get back on the path okay that had put me there to begin with okay we have to always be thinking about that so i'm going to talk about some of those concepts as we move along here um, one of the issues that traders deal with all the time is self-control. How many of you would, would agree that self-control is difficult? It's difficult when you're trying to pay attention to news, pay attention to the room, see all these posts coming in, people posting profits. I've, I've said this many times, me posting profits is really not helpful to a lot of people. Would you guys agree? I post profits out there that I made four grand. It just makes some people feel like crap. Right? When you see all these people posting their gains and you're and it didn't work didn't happen for you here's the thing if i don't post them people are angry with that too <laughs> well even if it's a percentage td and most of the time that's what i do i post the percentage but I didn't get that. First off, I didn't understand or I didn't see the trade. I didn't believe you were right. I didn't follow. I couldn't do this. I wasn't confident enough. I hesitated. Right? And they don't follow through. Or they micromanage. Okay. Self-discipline is what we have to work on in our trading. Okay, and that's that self-discipline to know who we are as a person. You know, there's a, um, 
old Clint Eastwood um, Dirty Harry movie where Dirty Harry says, man's got to know his own limitations. How many of you know your limitations? I can tell you traders that finally make it into the full-time arena, they know their limitations. How many of you have ever asked yourself about the self-control? And what I mean in self, how do you do that? How do you figure out about self-control? We'll talk about this in just a little bit. How do you find out whether or not you got self-control? Are you following a set of rules? Okay. I've talked to a lot of people in, in my coaching and they will fall off the path. They come back for coaching. I hold them accountable to the rules. They get back on the path and they start making money. Okay. We have to hold ourselves accountable and be self-disciplined in that accountability. If we don't exercise self-control, the market is designed to take our money from us, guys. It's no different than a casino. Would you guys agree that really the market is no different <clears throat> than an online video game casino? And if we treat it in a cavalier manner, the house always has the edge. It will just continue to skim that money out of our pockets unless we exercise self-discipline and control. Okay? These two quotes I put together for that reason. Be consistent. By consistent self-discipline and self-control, you can develop greatness of character right here. Trading doesn't just reveal your character. It also helps you build it if you stay in the game long enough. Character. That character where you understand who you are as a trader, what your limitations are, and you stay within a framework that helps you protect you from you. Okay, hope that makes some sense. And if you have questions, ask. Now, one of the things that I see in successful, um, successful and or disciplined traders is they're very much self-starters. Okay, they have a ravenous appetite for knowledge. And as a matter of fact, if it bugs them to death when they don't know something, it bugs them so much they'll stay up late. They'll do whatever they have to do to learn that thing that's, that's causing them problems. But traders that are struggling don't want to take the time to learn how to do specific orders that their brokerage offers. They don't want to call the broker and spend the time that it takes to learn how to use the platform. They don't want to take the time to watch all of those videos to learn how to set up their software the way they want it and make their software, their charting software, work for them. That's what we pay. Why we pay brokers, it's why we pay for software for our charting so that it works for us, that it improves our trading, that it gives us a tool to help support what we do. But those traders that take off, that are that find that success and drive, they're those self-starters. They will test and test and practice and practice to learn the details of the business. And they're relentless about finishing or going through that process continue it until they understand it. Okay, I've told the story a lot of times that probably embarrasses Mike all the time, but Mike practiced his trading for a year before he went live. 
And still today, if you go to his house and have him turn, turn on his computer, he's going to have his live screen is going to have X number of trades. But if you look at his paper trading screen, there's going to be double, maybe triple that in his paper trading. Even today, with the success he's had in trading, he's practicing. He's working every day to improve, to test some new idea, to find out whether that is right. We're good friends, and I think he trusts what I say. What I say. But he's just got enough suspicion in him to go try it and test it and find out, is this right? Does this work? To build that confidence. So if you're struggling in some of these areas, guys, you have to make that commitment to time. And I know no one wants to do that. No one wants to put that time in. But I would rather, I would rather you back away on certain activities that you think must be ultra important. But if you're looking at your account, your account's not growing, then probably the better thing would to be and the more efficient thing is to improve your skills with the tools, your pattern recognition price action, the strategy that you may want to use. Okay. How many in here think it's successful to copy another person that you're going to be able to be, you're going to be able to get rich if I just do exactly what Rick does, or I'll be able to get rich if I do exactly what Doug does, or Ed or Steve. No, it's, it, 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 it doesn't work. It never works. And the reason is because we're all individual traders. We're different, right? We are all different people. We have different hangups. We have different issues. We have different account sizes. We have different time commitments, different, different distractions, different methods that we may want to approach the market with. And so every trader like I said before, has to find out who you are as a trader. Every trader has to decide what are, find out what are my limitations. Okay. We have to figure those out for ourselves and we have to work through that mucky mess. We've got to go through, slog through the mud and figure out what is the thing that I need to learn or pick up to strengthen myself as a trader. And honestly, guys, when you think about it, in, 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 this is your business. If you don't do it, who's going to do it for you? How many people in here have been entrepreneurs or are entrepreneurs right now? Just type a Y in. If you've been a business owner before, that kind of thing. Would you guys agree that being business owners and entrepreneurs, the buck stops with you, right? Even if one of your com employees completely hoses things up, you are responsible. We have to take that same attitude with our trading. If I don't understand a candle pattern, if I don't understand a chart pattern, if I don't understand how to do a, 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 an order, or I don't know how to set up my charting platforms or any of the tools that you have, It's up to you to resolve that issue. You have to go get it. And the question comes down to how bad do you want it? There's a lot of people, and you guys know this, they're all over the world, okay? They're everywhere. They're probably out protesting tonight. That want to be rich 
that want to be successful but their decisions prevent that from occurring. Tons of traders I have seen over the years just don't want to do the work that it takes to be successful. You have to buckle down and do the work. You know, one of the things I talked about in my um, 3-8 trap class is the importance to me of a couple different things. First thing is in the morning, before the market opens, and, and you know, discounting the morning prep video and the blog and all of that stuff, I evaluate every single trade that I'm in before the market opens and base that against what I think the overall market condition is. All of my orders are in my decisions are made before the market opens. I'm prepared. Okay, that helps me. It may not be the thing for you, but that helps me be grounded in what I'm supposed to be doing. On my desk, I have my trade plan that tells me what my trade goals for the week are. And I'm working toward those goals every day and I keep it on my desk to keep it in front of me. Because I am the only one that can hold myself accountable. No one else can do it. I have to stay focused on the task at hand. Because if I don't make it, if I fail week over week over week over week, whose fault is it? My fault. Okay. So ask yourself, how bad do you want it? What are you willing to do to get the success in trading that you want? Are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to put in the time? See, to me, every night after the market closes, the room is done, I've done my workout, I've done whatever, I mow the lawn, whatever it is I need to get done, I need 30 to 45 minutes in front of my charts. I don't want any distractions. I don't have Skype on, I don't have my phone by me, I don't want any distractions for 30 to 45 minutes, minimum. Because I'm working on my watch list setting up charts and preparing for the next day. I can't have the distraction of the room. I need that time and I know that. As a matter of fact, if I don't get that time, I don't trade the next day. I don't even I don't even want to. You guys have heard me say that before, right? Come into the room. You know what, guys? I'm just not feeling like I'm going to trade anything today. That's right. You cannot say the dog ate your homework. That's right. There's no excuse. So when I'm not prepared, I don't trade. Okay. Make sure that you're willing to put in the time. And to me, overtime isn't a task when it comes to your success. It's an opportunity. You want to go through that. You want to push through to be successful. Whatever it takes, right? Whatever I have to do, that's what I'm going to do. And that's every entrepreneur, every business has that, that, that well, any business that survives 
has that as aspect. You ever walk into a business before, walk in and they peep, somebody looks up from the desk and they're, or looks up from you know the counter and they're reading a book or something and they kind of sigh like, oh geez, you know, don't bother me while I'm trying to do business in here. Wow, those are the people that don't last very long, right? Their heart is not in it. So ask yourself that question. What are you willing to do? How far are you willing to go to make this happen for you? And do you have any excuses that you just need to get off your chest and say, I got to give them up? There's no excuse. I have to push through. Okay. One of the major mistakes I see with traders and the, one of the major things that I see that's that makes a trader successful is that they have a clear and defined trading style. You guys have heard me say this before, but jack of all trades and master of none. Trying to trade multiple time frame charts. Trying to be a day trader, a swing trader, a position trader, a futures trader, a currency trader. And do it all at the same time. Guys, it's, that's not possible. Okay. You'll never master anything if you try to do everything all at the same time. Okay? We need to have ultimate focus in our trading. I, I, I said in the 3-8 in the trap class that if you show up to the market and you're still wiping the sleep out of your eyes and you, you turn your computer on about three to five minutes before the market opens and think you're ready to trade, you've really put yourself in a very dangerous situation. Now, you can add trading styles. You can be more than one thing. After you have become successful at one thing, you guys think it's going to be easier to be successful as one style of trading before you try to jump into something else? I see it all the time in trading. People start out with this great idea. Hey, I'm going to be a stock trader. Awesome. Boy, I took this class. Everything is great. I'm going to, I'm going to man, I got this down. Bang. They lose a bunch of money. Okay. So I'm not a very good stock trader. So what I'm going to do apparently my problem is is i'm not going fast enough so i start going to intraday charts i didn't solve any problems i didn't find out what was creating my problems or my losses i just decide to go faster must be the answer bam i lose money faster the next step well, you know what? My account is only so much now. I have to be, it's options. Options, that's my savior. Options are going to be the thing that's going to make me rich because I can do that with a small account. And we don't address the problems that created the bad trading to begin with. And bam, we lose more money. Okay. Work on being, um, having a good track record, solving those problems in one thing first. Okay? We cannot be everything at the same time. Nobody can. You know, take, um, take jet planes, for example. Jet planes are one of those things that are just super, super tech. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. And what they determined several years back is there's so much data input coming into the pilot, they can't deal with it. Then no one can process that much information at the same time.
And so they've turned all kinds of things into autom to automate it because the pilot can't keep up with all of those different inputs. Same thing is true of traders. We can't concentrate on that many things all at the same time. And what we do is we end up losing focus. We lose focus, we lose money. Does that make sense, guys? We need to get our trading into a group here. We need to realize or say, look, I got to get good at one thing first. I got to get consistent at one thing first before I add something else. Okay? Find out what it is, decide, make that decision. Okay? Don't be wishy-washy around it, about it. This is my decision, this is my call, this is the way I'm going. I find this to be, in my coaching guys, one of the issues that hangs up so many people. Hangs up so many people that it's distracting them from their own success. It's, it's, it's literally keeping them from progressing in trading because they're trying to be everything and they're not good at anything. Okay? Figure out what it is you want to be. Man's got to know his own limitations. Figure it out, make a decision, and then we can start moving forward in our trading and starting to progress. All right? Now I can tell you guys for, for my part, what makes me successful in my trading and my business is that I'm prepared. I don't come to the market unless I'm prepared. I don't come to the market unless I believe I'm ready to compete. Imagine, imagine a football player that just chooses to set out spring training and then just jump right into the first game. They're going to get their head handed to them, right? Well, and first off, what's going to happen is the coach is going to say, you're gone. You're not willing to put the work in. See ya. Success comes to those that are prepared. It's, it's planned for. I look at the extra work, the hours that I put in, as preparing for my success. And I'm willing to do it because I know that's what it takes to be just that, to hold on to that teeny tiny little edge in, in, in my trading. I have the slightest of edges, but if I come to the market unprepared if I come to the market in a mad dash to just hurry up and buy something boy I just got to buy something I'm just gonna lose money okay casinos were built by people with that mentality gotta get rich quick gotta get rich quick it'll be different this time Right? It'll be different. Every time they, pl it'll be different this time. That's a gambler's mentality. We have to break that and build a plan and be prepared. Okay? I have yet to find a trader that's built a career out of trading that didn't have some kind of a trade plan. It doesn't have to be a long, extended, you know, great big book. It can be half a page. This is what I do. This is what I don't do. These are the rules I follow in my trading. Now, the hard part with a trading plan is you can write it out, but if, you not, if you're not disciplined to follow the rules, 
if you break the rules once and then twice and then three times, guess what? You just developed yourself a pretty bad habit. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it's going to be different this time. Okay, traders don't stick around that don't have a plan. And, and, and the thing is, you can't just give lip service to it. You know, if you could, everybody could be rich in the market. But that's not the way it works, and it never has. Okay. You have to have a plan of attack. How are you going to do things? The rules that govern you as a trader, just like you had in any business, you know, you had rules for your employees, things that they had to accomplish, do, follow through on. If they didn't, they didn't stay working there very long. If you work for a company or a business and didn't follow the guidelines, the rules, the plans, you were out the door. The same thing is true in trading, and I know that is true for me. What happens to me if I get off plan, I lose money. Okay. Put in the time to prepare. And, you know, things that are, that are important, you know, uh, position sizing, entry points, stop losses, um, profit goals. Those are things that are very, very important in trading. And until you understand or have a framework to work within, you're always going to be like that dog chasing a squirrel. That shiny thing happens, squirrel, you're off, you're running, you're not thinking anymore, you're reacting. And that's going to cause you problems forever until you correct that, that issue. We have to be on task or on plan. Okay? I've seen the enemy and it is me. How many agree with that? You see, the market doesn't care whether you make money or lose money. It took me a long time to figure that out. Literally, I would blame everyone else I had this big chip on my shoulder that, geez, I had studied all of this stuff. I could do all of these different things. I knew everything about that there was to know about these indicators. I knew how to calculate them. I knew what the inputs were. Okay? I could write a scan that would just make you weep with the custom indicators in it. And guess what? It didn't make me any money. But I had this huge ego that all of this knowledge had made me some kind of, well, made me special. And it hadn't. It didn't. When I fessed up to the fact that none of that mattered, because the market doesn't care how much you know. The market doesn't care if you make money. The market doesn't care if you lose money. Okay, but how much emotion do we apply toward the market that the market has no emotion back? We fall in love with stocks. Well, it's Twitter. Twitter, well, you know, I know what Twitter is. I, this has got to be a good stock. It's got to be Twitter. Or Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe told me this was the best stock in the world. I have to, I need to buy this stock. Or Jim Cramer top, talked about it. Or man, this stock was mentioned four times today on CNBC. That must, there, there's an omen in that. And we get suckered in. We get off path. We see that shiny object and we go chasing down this road right to the slaughter. Okay. 
we have to develop rules now i you guys know a lot of my rules um that that i do you know one thing i don't do is i don't trade earnings events I don't, I have no desire anymore. It's not even a temptation anymore because I've beat that down in my, because that chasing that rush of that potential big win, right? It doesn't even rise to the surface of notoriety for me anymore. I don't care, I don't want it. Got nothing to do with me. Because this is what I do. This is who I am as a trader, and I'm going to stay on this path. Okay? I don't trade biotechs. I get these emails. People say, well, that's just irrational. There's good setups in biotechs just like there is anything else. And I say, yeah, that's true. There is. But I track my results, guys. And here's what I know about biotechs for me. I can trade bio, a biotech stock 10 times and just make great money. And then one time lose everything I ever made in biotechs. Because they're so volatile. Just one bad report and everything I ever made in those trades in biotechs just gets wiped away. Well, I got, you know... I'm not the smartest knife in the drawer, okay? But you stab me two or three times and I'm going to say, hey, stop doing that. I don't want that pain anymore. Cut it out. So I quit doing it. I just made a rule. These are off limits. I don't trade them. Now, how did I know that that was my case, that that was a problem that I could fix? Because I record my business, I record my work. Okay, have you ever seen a business that didn't have paperwork or statistics? Any business? Well. They're probably out there, but they're no longer around or they're on their way out of business, if that's the case. They'll never get any money from a bank, if that's the case. You know, I tell people about stats and the testing that I did. One of the reasons that I use the 3-8 trap and I don't chase the crossover or the 3 over the 8, because my stats tell me over tons of history, I can only win about 50-50. I'm only going to win about half those trades, and I want to be better than that. 50-50 is not good enough for me. I want to be better than that. Okay? I don't want to have half of my trades lose. So I've worked to figure out what works best for me? I know the patterns I want to trade. Is there any is there any question in anyone's mind? When I make a trade, I know that pattern is for me. It may not win, but there is there any question? Because when I see that pattern, I trade it, right? When I see that trade, I trade it. And I have a really high win-loss ratio as a result. I know what my pattern is. I know what my trade is. And I know where my edge is. And I don't move until I see it and have it. I have rules on entries. I have rules for profit goals. I have rules for stop losses. I have rules to protect me from those emotional things that get in the way. And I don't care what I have to do to eliminate those distractions. I've told you guys that I use uh, Dish Network um, satellite TV out here. And 
they had you know CNBC and Fox News and or Fox Financial or whatever um, on there, and I would find myself getting sucked into those. Okay, and and let's face it, their job is to suck you in, right? It's entertainment. It's financial entertainment. That's what they're there for. If they can't get you drawn in by, with the drama or something like that, they lose viewers. They lose revenue. They have to keep you drawn in. Right? Well, I know for a fact that that distracts me, that that causes me problems. I went as far as calling Dish Network and said, I want this blocked from my package. And they said, well, it's free. You don't have to worry about that. Just, you know, no, no, you don't understand. I don't want this feed coming to my house. I don't want to see it because I know that's a problem for me. I don't even want to be tempted to move that direction. Okay? Because there isn't anybody on CNBC, not one person out there, that cares about my money as much as I do. That's exactly right. <laughs> you are the product. That's exactly right. So I eliminated that. Now, that may not be a problem for you, but I know it was for me. How many have ever watched CNBC and you heard talking heads talk about something on, on there and then all of a sudden you look over and Rick or me or something pops a trade out that says, hey, hit, look at this ticker. This is looking pretty good. Hey, I saw that on CNBC. And, and you don't even think twice. You don't plan the trade. You don't know that. Oh, this has got to be a good trade and you jump on it. That was me. Almost as it's, well, it must be fate. Boy, that, that's, that ticker symbol has bounced off of me about three times today. This must be the trade. Better hurry up and jump on that. But guys, nobody cares about your money as much as you do. You shouldn't be taking um, that information without ferreting out whether or not that trade is for you. You know, we see it all the time. Somebody posts a trade in the room. Well, what do you think about this trade? Well, it's up 18% today. Well, what are you thinking here? Yeah, it's got a beautiful big bullish candle on it. But is that really your trade? Or are you just chasing your tail again? See, we have to eliminate those temptations and those problems from our trading. The only way I know to do that, guys, is to have a plan and a set of rules and the discipline to follow them. And I can tell you guys from all the people I've worked with around the country, you know, around the world in different places, Australia and Canada and all these other places that I've worked with traders, There's one theme. If they have a plan and they're disciplined to their plan, they make money. No plan, no discipline, no bueno, no money, no dinero. Okay. Now I know that kind of stuff is really boring. No one wants to talk about that stuff. No one wants to, oh gosh, here's another guy talking about, I gotta have this and these rules. And it's more than that, guys. It's, it's what you want to do. Everybody takes this idea of a trade plan, oh, it's so restrictive and I don't wanna to have to be held to that because here's the problem, right? If you have a trade plan, you can be held accountable. Who thinks I'm right about that? One of the reasons you don't wanna have a trade plan. 
I don't want to be held accountable. See, if I'm just kind of freewheeling out there, there's anything is okay, right? Nice, Lauren. So having that plan, having that focus in your trading is what's important. I know it's important to me because I've proven it. The way I trade options is because I've proven it in my stats, in my abilities, in my results. I've proven those rules. Now you can say, hey, Campbell is just out of his freaking mind. And I'm okay with that. If you can prove to me that you're making money, or more importantly, prove to yourself that you're making money following a different set of rules, I'm going to pat you on the back and say congratulations. Right? It doesn't matter what I think or whether or not it fits my rule. I'm going to give you my rules. I'm going to tell you my rules because that's what everyone asks for. But you have to make that call and that decision. This is for me. This is not for me. Because we're all different as, as traders, right? We're all a bit different. We do things a little bit differently. So what I'm saying here, guys, if I'm saying anything at all, is if you want to change your trading, if you want to be successful in your trading, you have to get to work on building a framework, knowing who you are as a trader, knowing what it is that you're going to do. Build a set of rules and follow them. Until you can prove that that rule is no longer effective or that's a problem, you follow those rules. Okay? The reason I kept all of these stats and did all this stuff, and Ed, Ed's another nerd like me. Um, <laughs> it's probably not wise to call a Marine a nerd, right? But... <laughs> um, the, re the reason he's so particular about his trades is because he's a stats nerd like me. He found out what works, what gives him the best results, and what doesn't. And it doesn't matter that this is a good trade signal. If that trade signal in the stats says this is only a 50-50 trade, I'm not taking the position. How many, how many banks do you think would take a loan from you or allow you a loan if they said, well, I got a 50-50 chance this guy's gonna pay it back? Nope. <laughs> you see what I mean? Just getting by is not good enough. We have to figure out what works the best for us and then work to continuously improve. And guys, still to this day, I look for anything that I can have that can improve my efficiency, that can save me time, that can make my job easier, that can take me to that next level. And I don't care what I have to do to find it or get it. If it's out there, I'm going to be always seeking that improvement. Never stopping. Because if I can eliminate just one more losing trade,
right? It makes a massive difference in your overall results, okay? So keep records, guys. The way I found out what worked for me and what didn't is I kept records and I tracked it and I evaluated it and I found out what was causing me problems and I made the corrections to fix those problems. No one else is gonna find those for me. Hey, we're kind of all represented here. Ed was a Marine. We've got a, we've got Navy. We have any Air Force in here? I was Army. Steve's not here tonight. He was Air Force. Oh, there's Frank. Frank's Air Force. Since we're on the on the subject of military here for a second. Was there any ambiguity in your guidebooks in the military? Was there, was there any gray? Even if you disagreed with it, it didn't matter, right? You did what you were told. You followed the procedure. or you were called on the carpet for it. Record keeping is all about that, guys. Keeping those records and finding out what works and what doesn't is eliminating the, all of those gray areas that you have in your trading, where you just don't know, you're not sure. Well, is this really working? That's why we have to record this information. And by the way, guys, it doesn't have to be overwhelming work. Grab yourself a notebook, write it down when you trade it. You don't have to, you don't have to build spreadsheets. You don't have to do anything fancy. Write it down. Record it. Evaluate it. And not only that, guys, have you ever thought about evaluating yourself? In any business that you've ever been a part of, you evaluate, you're evaluated and you evaluate the employees if you were the employer, right? They want raises, they want to move up, they want to progress. You have to do evaluations. How many of you have ever done an evaluation of yourself as a trader? Your effectiveness, your work ethic, your commitment to what you're doing, whether or not you're following your rules, whether you're progressing or not progressing, where's the weak spots that you need to correct and cover or take care of? What additional education do you need to get to solve that problem, to fill that hole, to improve yourself as a trader? Take the time to evaluate you Because we all need that. We all need that accountability. Now, I'll tell you how I did it, and this will just make just about every, every guy out there um, take a deep breath and shudder. Is I taught my wife just enough about trading and said, here's my rules. I need you to hold me accountable. Well, you hand over the reins to your spouse. You want a you wanna pucker moment? You just got it. Every time I made a trade, I had to consider, well, geez, I'm going to have to tell her that I, that I broke this rule, that I just did what I wanted. Nope, I'm not doing that. Hold yourself accountable to your rules and to your trading. And if you need some help with that, guys, one of the things that I've mentioned many times is find a trading partner. Find someone in the room. 
someone that you hit it off with, you see how they trade. Maybe you're on the same level with them, or maybe you want to improve to them. Ask them. Don't don't bug them or anything like that, but ask them. Hey, could we? Can can I ask you? You know, would you help hold me to my rules? Okay. Everybody have sound. We're good. Sound good. All right. Thank you. Find that person that can help hold you accountable. All right? Because it'll make a massive difference in your trading. And I know it's a gut check. It's something that nobody wants to do. Nobody wants to evaluate themselves or have someone evaluate them. But if you really are committed to improving your trading and continuous improvement in your trading, you have to allow that to happen. Okay? So that was the end of this tonight. And I hope you guys feel like you got something out of that. Because I really feel strongly about those items, those concepts. And I hope it made some sense to you. And I want to challenge you all today, okay, that if you've been struggling in your trading, it's, it's time to do that check, right? If, if things aren't improving, if you're continuously feeling like you're banging your head against the wall, um, nothing seems to be working, then it's time to do that self-check. It's time to make those corrections and those course corrections, okay? And I wanna tell you guys, as much as it seems like it's a hassle when you're trying to move through that process, I'm gonna tell you it's worth it because the end result is profitable trading. Isn't that what we all want? If I have to, it, if it required me to crawl through the mud day after day to get me successful trading consistently, I would crawl through the mud day after day to get it. Whatever it took. That's what I wanted. That was the goal I wanted. If that's what I have to do, that's what I'm going to do whatever it takes, okay? And I'm not a bit above doing anything to try and reach success. Whatever has to be done is what I'll do. Okay, so thanks guys for being here. I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, I wanna wish you all a fantastic evening. Rob, yes, um, this is recorded. I will render this and, and get it posted um, as soon as I get a chance. Um, but thanks for taking the time to, to listen to this and um, I, I, I hope it makes a difference in your trading, I really do. Okay. You guys are welcome. Thanks for being here tonight. Really appreciate it. You guys take care. Have a great evening. We'll see you right back here bright and early tomorrow morning. Y'all be safe. Take care.